we're gonna get started on the first part of fin number three. And fin number three is gonna have something a little bit special. To start off with, we're gonna need a flap, and that flap is gonna be six inches by six and three quarter. And we're gonna score this along the six and three quarter inch side at half an inch and three quarters of an inch. So this flat, or this flap is gusseted. And let's go ahead and mat this flap before we add it to I think what we're gonna do we're gonna do mostly solid color and then add a leading edge of pattern paper so that flap ends up being six by six so we're going to We're gonna trim this at five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take an extra inch off. I think that four and three quarters. And then we will add a strip of pattern paper at the bottom. That's Actually, perfect. How often does that happen? Go ahead and grab our page. I'm going to crease it. And we're going to line it up there at the top. I'm gonna eyeball the center. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mat the underside here. I think we're just gonna go ahead and mat that. with, again, um, a little more plain paper. Okay, we're gonna mat this to six and a quarter. And I'm gonna go to three and a half. And that's gonna sit right up there. We're gonna leave this blank for now. We might, I might come back later, depending on how much pattern paper I have left at the end of the project. Now we need to create a gusseted pocket. And to do that, we're gonna trim this. This is 110 pound. I'm gonna trim this to 
three and three quarters inches tall. by seven and three quarters inches wide. Now we're gonna score this. And I'm gonna need the large scoreboard for this. I'm gonna score this at half an inch and three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to repeat that on these two shorter sides. I'm going to go ahead and miter these corners and unlike with the um, with the cover, I'm not concerned about putting a gap in there and then I'm going to go ahead and trim out that piece right there I'm going to repeat that on this side Now we have our gusseted pocket, we just need to adhere it down. That'll work. So this is three inches, three inches. So I want to trim this to two and three quarter inches. And I cut it the wrong way. <laughs> Naturally, that's just something I would do. So let's trim this down to six inches. Just trim both of these down to six inches. See where that gets us. out perfect. You can't really burnish that down so I'm just gonna go over it with my finger as best I can. Now we're gonna make the thing that goes in that pocket. All right, we are gonna make a notebook to go in there. And I'm gonna, well, it would be great if I took all of it off. There we go. We're gonna trim this down to six inches by 11 and a half. We are going to score this at five and a quarter. So 
sorry, not five and a quarter, five and three quarters. I'm also gonna score this again. Got the fold right here. I'm gonna score this again at quarter inch because of how I'm gonna bind this. I'm gonna staple bind this as opposed to stitch binding. That's the cover for the inside. We're gonna use this is called Tomo River paper, and this is, it's very thin. It's almost onion skin paper, but it, it does shadow quite a lot. However, it does not bleed through. And we're gonna trim this to the same dimensions, 11 and a half by six. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna trim on this with a sliding cutter. So I'm gonna use the guillotine. Just a standard swing line stapler, nothing fancy. Okay, well now we have the problem of these pieces peeking out of the edge, so we're gonna trim those edges up. about six started off with six pieces so now it's a total of 24 pages I'm going to just slide right in here and we can put tags and stuff in there too and I may put a second one in there depends on how much paper I've got left at the end of this project so I haven't really planned anything too fancy for over here that's Long enough. Do that. Do want each side because this is going to be that centerpiece. The fin itself will be right in here, and then there will be another piece directly on the other side. So I do want it to mirror. So let's cut this to six and a quarter. Right now I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants. And that'll give her some, some spaces that she can just put some pictures down or journal, whatever she would like to do in that space. And now we're gonna add this to the fin. officially halfway through the book.
we're going to start on fin number three, page three. So this is going to be the mirror of, it would help if I had the book right side up. We're gonna mirror this page. For the fourth page on the third fin, we're going to have a hidden waterfall. We're going to have, it's going to open out like this, and there will be a waterfall here, but on this side, we're going to have a pocket. So first we're going to trim this piece up. This is 110 pound cardstock. Actually, you know what? That piece, no, that piece is not gonna be wide enough to use. So we're gonna trim this to five and three quarters by six and a half. And now let's go ahead and trim the waterfall. For that we're going to need seven pieces of 65 pound cardstock. And we're gonna cut that to three and a half by four and three quarters. So on the three and a half inch side, we're going to score these at half an inch. These should fit nicely just inside here. But before I add the waterfall, I'm going to put this on the page because I don't imagine that trying to adhere this down to the page with the waterfall attached would be very difficult or would be very easy. In fact, I imagine it would be more challenging than necessary. let that glue dry. Let's go ahead and get the waterfall started. I'm going to create some pattern paper here just to help stretch this collection a little bit farther. And I took this green paper and I marked out a section that's four and three quarters inches wide by six and a half inches tall. That's a little bit bigger than I actually need, but I wanna make sure that I get coverage across the entire area where I need it. And I'm gonna grab a piece of paper to stamp off. Cause I'm gonna start with aged mahogany and this little stamp from Prima. Now I'm going to use some of these stamps for image 
stamps. Next, we're going to create a magnetic closure for, for the waterfall. It's just going to wrap around this way. And this tag is going to be two and three quarters inches long. And that's actually a pretty good width. So I'm going to leave the width as is. And we need to score this at half an inch and three quarters of an inch. This crease at the half inch mark, I am pushing it just up against the crease for where this is going to get bound into the album. Now let's go ahead and add the magnets. I'm going to use two pairs of magnets to seal this closed. I don't want to lose these two magnets, so I'm looking for something large and metal to seal it down to. And let's go ahead and trim some pattern paper from the collection. This is two inches. I did not measure that, so let me measure that real quick. So that looks like one and three quarters inch. So we're gonna trim it to half an inch, or an inch and a half. And one and 
quarters. Set that aside to dry. I'm going to create the mat for this little pocket. going to add some distress oxide to just help that embossed pattern stand out a little bit. And now we're ready to add this into the album. And I may go ahead and add a tag in here, just loose later. We're gonna have to see how much pattern paper we have left once we get done with all the pages. And I wish I could link to this embossing folder. Unfortunately, this was a freebie that came with, you can see where it was stuck down to the magazine that it came with, that I got several years ago. I'll see if I can find something similar and link to that. So now we are three fins in. Next up is fin number four. 